where you created from. Forget the creator even. I, that much is not even expected from you here. The only thing expected from you is reflect deeply into your own creation. Just the word creation, but not mentioning the creator himself, right? Because this person is in denial, so let's just make him think about what he can see. The first few ayat are about beliefs in what you cannot see. Now Allah is calling you to think and reflect about something that you can see, that you can reflect about, but they take a lot of careful insight. Now think of the desert Arab of the time, can he look inside the, the body where the fluid comes from? He can't. Allah Azza wa poses the challenge to him in this surah, but he only sees what comes out. So Allah says, خُلِقَ مِن مَا إِن دافق. The human being, he was created from this, this water, ma, but he gives the water an adjective, which is dafiq. Which is, it's beautiful in the surah because the, the star was given an adjective, which was thaqib. The star was given the adjective, thaqib, which pierces through, drills a hole and comes all this distance through and reaches you. The light that pierces through, that's called thaqib. It pokes a hole in the darkness. The word dafiq means that which pushes. That which breaks through. Like if water breaks a dam and comes through, it's called dafiq. If you take a mug, it's full of water, you turn it over. All of it just gushes out all at the same time. This is ma'un dafiq. This is what difq is. So Allah says water that gushes out immediately. It comes right out, comes right through. It's consistent with the imagery of the surah, subhanallah. So we say, dafaq al ma'u. Uh, what dam'u, also it's used in literature Water came out with force or blood started gushing out Just like, you know, you can't stop it That kind of blood coming out We find the difq also Ma in the difq, that's how it's been explained Meaning water that is only associated with gushing It's never still That kind of water that's never still It's only in gushing form, subhanAllah Then, as we go forward we, we, I want you to keep in mind the reflection that Allah Azza wa Jal wants us to keep associated. So far we have reflected on things we cannot see. We have reflected on things that come out of our own body, ma in dafiq, that fluid which is the origin of the human being, putting him in his place. But then Allah Azza wa Jal goes further and says there's another journey. The journey of this water that gushes forward. What is this journey? يَخْرُجُ مِن بَيْنِ الصُّلْبِ وَالتَّرَائِبِ That's where the journey begins. The journey of the light that travels all the way and comes to you, the tariq that comes to you, it began with a najm. The journey of this fluid, it begins where? يَخْرُجُ مِن بَيْنِ الصُّلْبِ وَالطَّرَائِبِ Sulb means something hard. And one of the hardest bones in the body is the spine. It's the tough, the back, right? And one of the words for the, the back in Arabic, or specifically the spine, is sulb. Okay? Also the loins, for example, min aslabihim, right? From their loins, meaning from their lineage. That's how it's used also. Now Allah says from, the, from your spine, the back of your spine, and at taraib at taraib is the chest bones. Okay, these bones right here. So for example, we find uh, the singular of it is at tariba uh, and hiya idham as sadr as we find in the Salah al-Arab and Bahrul Muhit and other, other texts. That the, the, uh, the chest bone and the backbone. And Allah, was, Allah says this journey begins somewhere inside you. Now some have looked at this scientifically and said, okay, the sulb, and its linguistic meaning, and the spine, and where does sperm actually develop from, where does money begin, right? where is it formulated, etc. But think of it from the time of the Ar desert Arab who's hearing it for the first time. What's going on in his head? This is a very small amount of space, right? And Allah Azza wa Jal has depicted to him a mystery that has not to be solved for a good millennium and a half since that was said. A few ayat ago, he was depicting a journey of millions, and if not billions of miles. And now, this small body of yours seems like an endless ocean because you can't figure out this mystery. SubhanAllah. So not only are you incapable of encompassing the vastness of the sama, you can't even totally figure out what's going on inside of you. This is illustrating the powerlessness of the human being. This is how the, when the Arab hears it, يَخْرُجُ مِنْ بَيْنِ الصُّبِي وَالتَّرَائِبِ It's still a mystery to him. Allah didn't point the specific place. JazakAllah khair. Right? He didn't point out the specific place. And this is the beauty of the, this, uh, this surah. It puts together two concepts that Allah puts elsewhere in the Quran. He says, سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ أَنَّهُ الْحَقِّ we will, we will soon show them our miraculous signs in the horizons and even within themselves until it becomes absolutely clear to them that that is the truth. That this in fact is the truth. Subhanallah. So this is really the, 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 the beginning theme of the surah, يَخْرُجُ مِن بَيْنِ الصُّلْبِ وَالتَّرَائِبِ One more ayah, inshallah ta'ala, briefly, and then we'll conclude. Uh, actually, before we go to the next ayah, I should probably stop. Before we get to the next ayah, just say one more thing about this ayah. You know, we've already read previously a similar Allah Azza wa calling the human being to what his beginnings are. 
but there the, the crime was kufr. Allah says, قُتِلَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا أَكْفَرَهُ مِنْ أَيِّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقَهُ مِنْ نُطْفَةٍ خَلَقَهُ فَقَدَّرَهُ you know, may the human being be killed, may he be destroyed. How horrible, how, how vicious is this belief? What was he created from? From this nutfa, from this droplet, right? Similar text. But there the crime of the human being was denial. He came into contact with it, he denied. Here it begins from an even beginning point. Allah calls him insan, not kafir here. Meaning the point here is forgetfulness. Human being just, he went about his life and completely forgot his own origin and forgot to stop and think and reflect about it. Allah makes him look outside in the horizons, then He makes him look inside of Himself. And then inshallah ta'ala as the surah continues, we'll see what conclusion Allah Azza wa wants us to reach in the next coming ayat. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, nashadu an la ilaha illa anta, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. To download more lectures, learn more about our project, and to help support it, visit www.bayyina.com slash dream. That's B-A-Y-Y-I-N-A-H slash dream. You are free to share these recordings with family and friends. Thank you and Jazakumullah Khairan for helping us make our dream a reality. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, thumma amma ba'd. Fa'a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, innahu ala raj'ihi laqadir. رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي والله ما ثبتنا عند الموت بلا إله إلا الله آمين يا رب العالمين. Okay, so the previous couple of ayat we spoke about the things that Allah Azza wa Jalla calls our attentions to first of all in the sky and then within our own selves, illustrating our weakness, our inca- incapacity not only to not be able to fathom them completely but not to explore them as we may wish. Okay. Then Allah Azza wa Jalla says this profound statement, إِنَّهُ عَلَىٰ رَجْعِهِ لَقَادِرٍ A raw translation would yield, no doubt he is in complete control over returning it. رَجْعِهِ of its return. So, what is this return that Allah Azza wa Jalla speaks of? Most of the Mufassirun comment that this return is of course bringing human, returning the human being after he is dead back to life. But there's something really beautiful and profound in the use of this word here. Because Allah speaks of the human being, the fluid going into the woman in the form of a, you know, basically just a fluid. And then what comes out of her womb is a human being. So what is entered is, a, is something dead and what is returned is something fully formed. Something minuscule goes in and something profound comes out. Allah returns it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same way Allah says if Allah can produce this return after this fluid has gone in and turned out into a human being, Allah is capable then also in, of returning the human being from whatever form. If, if He can con- create the human being out of water, water and return him out of the womb, then the earth, the womb of the earth, will yield him back no matter what he turns into. So the earth is going to be talked about as a womb as the ayat continue. The word innahu here illustrates izalat al-shak. What that implies is that there are people who are not willing to k- give this thought consideration. They'll go as far as to say, yes, the birth is miraculous. They'll go that far. But they were not willing to take that next step. Allah Azza wa is giving them that next step. In the eloquence of the surah, we don't find in Allah ala raj'ihi laqadir. And usually, you know, so it says certainly he is capable of returning it. But the word he, a pronoun is used typically when the noun is already mentioned. Like if you're telling someone a story and you say once upon a time there was a man, the next sentence doesn't say the man went out to town, it says he went out to town, right? So the word he would be an illustration of a noun that was already mentioned. Interestingly, the word Allah hasn't occurred in the surah. Again, keeping his name secret because that's part of the theme, enshrouding his name in secrecy in this surah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, because that's part of the theme of the surah and also illustrates Allah Azza wa Jal's displeasure of the ones who have forgotten him. May Allah not make us from them. Now Allah says he is in complete control over returning it and complements what he started saying in the previous surah. In the previous surah he said, إِنَّهُ هُوَ يُبْدِئُ وَيُعِيدُ Exactly the same subject. No doubt it is he who initiates and brings back. Just like he initiates the creation of that fluid and brings it back a human being and initiated the human being's existence on this earth and will bring it back in the next life after we are gone. Similarly he says, إِنَّهُ عَلَى رَجْعِهِ لَقَادِرُ Now that this has been illustrated, Allah Azza wa gives us the next conclusion. يَوْمَ تُبْلَ السَّرَائِرِ The day on which secrets will be thoroughly tested and left out. 
you know, something that is pulled out and exposed to everybody. This is for what the word bala is used for, not just for testing, but for completely exposing. So Allah says when secrets, sara'ir, and by the way, the word sara'ir comes from the singular sarira. Now there are two words in the root. There's sir, sir, and the plural of sir, which means secret, is asrar, right? But then there's the word sarira, and the plural of that is sara'ir. And sarira is a very well-guarded secret. Sir is a secret. But a sarira is like it's got mubalagha and it's a really well-guarded secret that nobody could find out about. It was protected by the ones who didn't want it exposed. Allah says they will be thrown out in the open like, you know, open, open access information, open source basically, no matter how much you try to guard. So Allah says, يَوْمَ تُبْلَ sarair. This is important because if you notice, the theme of the surah was secrecy. And if you notice, the previous surah spoke about those who are who oppress the believers. Shuhud. Whatever they did with the believers, they themselves were witness to it. And if the ulama speak in the previous surah, the Mufassirun speak about genocide and crimes against innocent people that were buried alive or mass graves and all these kinds of heinous crimes that have existed throughout history, even in recent history. But when a nation commits those kinds of crimes, they bury the, 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 you know, the evidence. And they don't let anybody excavate the site and all that kind of stuff. And they use their military and their police and all, you know, and they'll prevent the journalists from going in there to see what's really going on, all this stuff. Why? Because they want to keep it a secret. If it comes out, then they'll be exposed. Allah Azza wa says, يَوْمَ تُبْلَ sarair, The day on which even the most well-guarded of the secrets will be exposed. It began with night. That is of secrecy. Allah Azza wa let us know there's hafil here. And what I failed to mention before was, the stars that are at such a distance are witness. And if they are witness, what's so hard to believe that there's someone right here too? If they are fully witness at such a distance, the star Allah has made a witness to what goes on on this earth, then Allah has assigned. What's the big deal for Allah Azza wa Jal to create a witness for each and every one of us, the hafiz that has been assigned over us? The next ayah, subhanAllah, Allah says, فَمَا لَهُ مِن قُوَّةٍ وَلَا نَاصِرٍ First of all, this is a contrast with the previous surah. In the previous surah, we found nations that had a lot of power. Power to hurt the believers. In the very beginning, قُتِلَ أَصْحَابُ الْأُخْدُودَ النَّارِذَاتِ الْوَقُودِ Later on, هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ الْجُنُودِ فِرْعَوْنَ وَثَمُودِ Previous surah. Didn't the news of the armies come to you? The armies of Fir'aun and Thamud? Are Allah mentioning armies, illustrating power. But here he says, a, a day is coming when these secrets are exposed. Of course, these secrets are usually very well guarded. So when they are exposed, what does that illustrate? Those, the, the armies, whatever they were, whatever mechanisms they were, have all failed. They've been overcome, they've been overpowered. Allah says, فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ قُوَّةٍ وَلَا نَاصِرٍ Then on that day, he will have no, no power to his avail, nothing for him that is in, in, of any power whatsoever, nor any helper. Now what's power and helper? What are, why are these two things important? When you try to hide something, you do whatever is in your power to hide it. And if there's something not in your power, what do you do? You ask for somebody's help to, to help you hide it. Think of even a, in, a, something as simple as a person who's sick, who's trying to hide part of his leg. It's, he's lying in a hospital bed and his leg is exposed. And he wants to cover it. He's too weak to even cover his leg. So he doesn't have the power. What does he do next? He asks somebody's help. Could you put, you know, could you cover it right here? Could you cover this for me? He doesn't have help for himself. Allah says, no quwa. They will have no power whatsoever for themselves nor any helper to help them cover these kinds of th their tracks. And this again, perfectly completing what we learned before. The people who killed the believers, they themselves were witness, but they kept it a secret for themselves. Only Allah knew. Only Allah knew what they, the crimes they had committed against the believers. But now, to, to, when those secrets are exposed, they will have no power, nor any helper. This again goes further. It, it's, it's elaborating what Allah says before, يَوْمَ لَا تَمْلِكُ نَفْسٌ لِنَفْسٍ شَيْئًا On the, the day on which no person will have no authority, no power in, in the case of any other. So first of all, a person doesn't have power for themselves. Forget the idea of even trying to help anyone else. SubhanAllah. By the way, when Allah says, يَوْمَ يَوْمَ For example, يَوْمَ تُبْلَى السَّرَائِرِ فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ قُوَّةٍ وَلَا فَ يَوْمَ إِنْ فَ The day on which and then then there won't be any helpers. What that implies is there are people that keep secrets now. Then they won't. But now they have some power apparently. And they have helpers at their disposal. So they are in a position of some power. One of the things you need to, inshallah ta'ala, bear in mind in complementing the previous surah with this one is in the previous surah we find the disbelievers oppressing Muslims. And in this surah we find what happens before the oppression. The secret plans of the disbelievers that they don't expose. We'll find later on, إِنَّهُمْ يَكِيدُونَ كَيْدًا We'll find that in this surah too. 
They're making those plots, those plans to execute their, their attacks on the believers. But before we get to that, the next half of the surah, 